But then we did these shows at Watford. We did Soft Machine. We did um, all, all Pentangle. I remember we did The Faces. Uh, all sorts of people. It, it was a much bigger venue, 1600 capacity uh, Watford. So they were the biggest, was the bigger things. Um, and then we started again in Aylesbury in, in uh, April 1971. Uh, we put on the Groundhogs. And I, I, you know, I thought we'll try one and just see what happens in this old hall that had a rather bad reputation um, from the early days, from the uh, from the 60s. And uh, it was just packed. I mean, I think everybody came out of from everywhere, and it was just nobody told us what the fire limit was. It was actually 700, but nobody thought in the m million years we'd get to 700. It was just out of the question. And I think we put 900 in there or something because I hadn't even asked what the fire limit was, and nobody seemed that bothered. But nobody expected it, so we just kept on selling tickets. After that, we obviously had to uh, apply the fire limit strictly, but. Um, uh, anyway, that first uh, summer, 71, we put on Fleetwood Mac, we put on, uh, not the Hoople again, I remember, Genesis. Uh, and in September 71, we put the first Bowie gig on, which was, you know, very significant. It was the first time he'd ever played Hunky Dory on stage. Um, basically, we put Al Cooper on that summer, um, and Al Cooper had met David Bowie and told him what a great gig it was. And so Bowie's manager, Tony DeFries, contacted me, and then we put him on in September 71. And for Bowie, it was a very exper experimental gig. It was the first gig with uh, Mick Ronson, uh, Trevor Boulder, and Woody Woodmansey. And uh, they were doing Hunky Dory, they were doing some of Man Who Sold the World. First time I'd ever played it on stage, you know, ever. Um, he obviously did um, a Space Oddity, you know, which had been a hit the year before. Uh, and I remember in the dressing room afterwards, and he said to the guys, you know, he said, look, this was really great. Let's do this properly. Let's go out and do this properly. And they said, yeah, all right, yeah, we can do that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was sort of where the band formed, I suppose, if you could say, in a sort of official way. And uh, it was, just, he had amazing charisma. You know, he came on these sort of Oxford bags, which looked like a dress from a distance, but it was actually sort of very wide trousers, very long hair, as in, the cover of Man Who Sold the World. He looked just like that. He then went, uh, did one or two odd bits and pieces, and then wrote and recorded Ziggy Stardust. And then we put him on again in January 72, January the 29th, 72, and he debuted Ziggy Stardust at Friars again. As he had, uh, between those two gigs, he'd done nothing live, really. Uh, maybe one or two little charity things. And, um, and it was just extraordinary. I mean, Hunky Dory, we expected him to do Hunky Dory because that had been released subsequently. It wasn't released by the time he did the first gig, he just played the tracks from it. Oh You Pretty Things and uh, Life on Mars and those sort of tracks. Uh, it came out in December in the UK and went to number one in Aylesbury. It didn't go to number one uh, across Britain, but it went to number because of this gig in September. So we were all geared up for him to do Hunky Dory, and we were going to have Queen Bitch, and we were going to have all this stuff, it was going to be great. And he came on with completely new material, uh, which was a Ziggy Stardust album. He did do some from, uh, from Hunky Dory, a few tracks, but um, uh, it was just the most, we just had our mouths open, you know, it was just like we'd never seen anything like it. And then of course he came back again in July 72, by that time, the whole Ziggy Stardust show was completely developed and the production was developed. Uh, the show, the clothes, everything was fully developed and it was just extraordinary. Um, RCA flew in 50 American journalists for our gig, just for our one gig. Um, and, you know, I, it's, it was just unbelievable. We'd also put him on at Dunstable in June uh, the 72, so and that was also an extraordinarily good gig. But it was, that was the most magic period because it was, you know, you knew history was being created right in front of you. It was just extraordinary.